Oregon registration number DM80031. Welcome back to La La Land on CRN Digital Talk. That's Ned Liddell. And that's Fred Chapin. We're talking with Mr. Steve Julian of KPCC. He is an entertainment columnist. He is editor web in our town at, or at Inland Valley Repertory Theater. Uh, and he's also working on August uh, Osage County at uh, Cypress College right now. Thanks again for joining us, Steve. Thank you. And I auditioned this morning in Beverly Hills for Wicked Lit. Great group. They do Halloween-themed shows. And uh, cool. there will be performances uh, in October at the Mausoleum in Altadena. Great outdoor space for spooky kinds of things. <laughs> Great. Wicked lit. That must be a lot of fun. It is. Seems like at the heart of you, you really are a, an actor. Is this, is this a fair a assessment? Part of it, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Is it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're. You, it's great. It, yeah. It, it satisfies me and it satisfies my desire to you know be other people at times and to explore you know characters and and write and all that so yeah infinite possibilities yeah what what type of of artistic form like artistic um shows and and theater shows and and people what 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 gravitates what do you gravitate towards what pulls to you oh what like speaks to you? Well, the I most. I think that because of my freelance writing for LA Stage Times, you know, I, I do see a lot of theater, and I do talk to a lot of theater directors and actors and playwrights and such. Um, I don't see as much opera now as I used to. I used to go once or twice a season. Um, I haven't been in a few years. I'm not one to go out to clubs. You know, and, and which is sad because I have a dear friend who is in a group that plays at 1130 at night and I've never seen her before. Right. <laughs> but um, but would you would you say there's good theater and bad theater in Los Angeles? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but and and the really good stands out. I mean, what what would you say the ratio is to that? Oh, Boy, those are gray areas because you have to really define what good means and what bad means. And, uh, you know, there are plays that, that I might see that are not satisfying mm. or that seem not yet completely written or conceived or directed in such a way that didn't make sense to me. So, and, and those are out there, mm -hmm. you know, of course. And that's the risk people take in buying tickets to go see theater. And I think that's one reason why it's tough to get people to go out to theater. Now, there are some theater companies, um, the um, Fountain Theater in Hollywood, for example, Boston Court in Pasadena, places like this uh, where every time I've been there, they've had a full house. Mm -hmm. I know that um, the Fountain seems to be able to extend the runs of their shows and to bring people in to every performance. And it's, you know, kudos to Stephen Sachs and, and his group there. Um, and there was a show that I saw there last year, The uh, Ballad of Emmett Till. And it was a show that left a lasting impression on me. Mm. Um, one of the things that I, I hear from people repeatedly about why they don't go to see more theaters is they say that, that everything's so far away, that theaters are far away when they can just go down the street to the movie theater and, and see a regular movie. But um, I, I think what people are forgetting is that going to theater is an experience. It's it's getting dressed up. It's driving to the place. It's experiencing the show. And I think that we're sort of missing that in our society. What do you think that we can do in order to get that back, in order to, to get back that, that love and that passion for actually taking the time to go to a show? You know, there's this debate about whether Los Angeles is a theater town. And I think it's a silly question in the first place because, yes, L.A. is a theater town. I'm sure it's Hollywood, it's Tinseltown, and you know, movies may be the primary industry here. But, but there is a lot of theater here in Southern California. And yes. I don't know why it's so hard to drive to a theater when you have to drive to a movie theater. Right. You know, to see a, a, a live stage performance because there are so many. What are there, 200, 300 theaters here in Southern California that, you know, one can go to? 
maybe it's the cost point. You can buy a movie ticket for what twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars, mm -hmm. and um, you know. But then there's things like Gold Star, where you get two sure, for one tickets, exactly you know? half price, or theater companies like Courage that you know will offer a pay what you want night. Right. Um, Parsons knows in Pasadena. Um, um, I should say I'm on the, on the board there, but it's a pay what you want uh, system right now, and um, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of theater companies are experimenting with whether they should charge differently because the idea of having a subscription season is really uh, it seems to be at least to me on the decline it's i don't think it's going to go away but it is sure hard to get people to buy into a whole year of theater when they don't know what they're going to get we were talking recently with michael seal and colin mitchell about that difference between a membership season and a subscription season and uh, membership season seems to definitely be on the upswing it's a way to give money to a nonprofit theater as a tax deduction and then go see the shows almost whenever you want. Mm -hmm. And it's a creative approach, and I think that it's going to prove to be pretty successful. I'd agree. Uh, something that's going on um, right now today, as a matter of fact, is um, the uh, LA Stage Alliance is uh, hosting a... Um, uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Symposium, here? A, fo a, a focus group. Yeah, yeah, a focus group um, to talk about the state of LA theater and um, to talk about uh, forming a task force uh, to uh, promote Los Angeles theater. Um, they are concerned that um, there aren't enough theater advocates and arts advocates in Los Angeles. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I, I I would agree that there can never be enough advocates for the arts. You know, mm -hmm. um, and the arts is just one. <laughs> one environment where we need advocates. There are many. But in terms of the arts here in Southern California, whether it's for museums, live performance spaces, or whatever, when you have people who talk about it, and we have so many more opportunities these days, you know, through Twitter and Facebook and all of that, to talk about and to reach out to more people, it's a blessing because it is hard to get people into the theater, you know, getting butts in seats, as they say. Mm -hmm. You need the advocates. You need the people who will be the angels and, you know, chip some money into the system as well. Um, and I'm, I'm optimistic about it. I'm not, I'm not a pessimist for theater here in L.A. I think things are definitely improving. What are your thoughts about um, establishing a fine arts council to train arts administrators who um, weren't necessarily trained on um, how to administer a theater? Wonderful. Wonderful. I, anything you can do to improve the, um, the life of theater uh, or any sort of arts here in Southern California, it's a great thing. Look at where funding is going, you know, from the state and, you know, other sources. When that dwindles, we have to find ways ourselves in our own communities to pick up the pieces and, and get busy and do that. It's definitely important to be proactive. Exactly. Finding other methods. We'll be back to talk to Steve Julian of KPCC on La La Land with Brett and Ned on CRN Digital Talk. That's Brett.